When it comes to value investing, one of the most important metrics that was developed in order to help you assess whether a stock is undervalued or overvalued is Graham's number. Graham's number refers to a metric created by Benjamin Graham, who is the godfather of value investing. In this video, I'm going to share with you how it is that you can calculate Graham's number for different stocks and most importantly, how it is that you can create a Graham's number stock screener on your Excel and Google Sheets spreadsheet so that way you can quickly find good investment opportunities to invest in. Okay, so as you can see, here is a brief overview of what the Graham number means. So as you can see, the formula for the Graham number is quite simple. What you do is you take the square root of 22.5 times the earnings per share times the book value per share. What this number essentially tells you, according to Benjamin Graham, is it represents a fair valuation of a company's value. And it helps to be able to set the upper limit of the price that you pay for a particular stock. So rather than me just telling you this information, what I want to go ahead and do is share with you a step-by-step -step example of the calculation using a company and then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to share with you how it is that you can get this number automatically calculated for a lot of different companies at once so that you can find those attractive investment opportunities. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and calculate this number for Apple. So the first thing that you need to do is to get the company's financial information to make the calculation. In this case, I'm going to be using Y Sheets. This works on Excel and Google Sheets uh, to be able to get all of the company's financials and key metrics over time. So as you can see, you get the financial growth metrics, the key metrics, cash flow, balance sheet and income statement. And you get this for many, many years into the past. So now that we have this, we have to start looking for the different components of the formula. So first things first, I'm going to go here. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to type gram number with this already set up all we need to do is to be able to enter the formula so in this case the first thing that we need to do is we need to enter 22.5 times and then the rest of the formula which is the earnings per share and the book value per share which you can see right here so the earnings per share this number is found right here you can see it here so we're going to enter this and then we're going to multiply the book value per share so this is something that we could calculate ourselves or we could go to the key metrics and look for the book value per share which you can see right here this is a metric that's already calculated so we're going to take that in that case we click enter and this is the number now the one thing that we need to do is to take all of this put it into a bracket so that way this gets uh, multiplied properly and now what we need to do is to do the square root so this is the formula in Excel for the square root. And this is going to take the square root of the multiplication here. We've already closed the bracket. So it should be the square root of 430 something. And this gives us 20.79, which in this case, according to the Graham formula, is the upper limit of the price that we should pay for Apple stock. So now that we have the upper limit, the next step is to be able to compare this number with the company's actual stock price we could do this just by googling apple stock price or we can also get this number on our spreadsheet i'm going to do the latter so we can see it right here so in this case we're going to change this to stock price and now what we can do is to use the Weiss price formula from Y sheets. We're going to enter the symbol, which is Apple, the parameter, which is price. And just like that, we're going to be able to get the company stock price. So when we compare the two numbers, we see that there's a huge difference in terms of the actual stock price and the gram number. So in this case, just based on this ratio alone, which by the way, there's many different ratios that you should look at and many different valuation techniques before deciding whether or not a stock is undervalued but just on this one alone we can see that the stock would be considered overvalued why because the stock price is much higher than the gram number in fact if we were to divide this number by this 
we can see that in this case it's overvalued by 7.89 times. So that's quite a lot. However, if the stock price was, let's say, $15 and the gram number was 20.79, then in that case, the stock would be undervalued and it would be an interesting opportunity to explore and perhaps do some more research. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how it is that you can build the gram number stock screener that's going to allow you to identify undervalued or overvalued stock investment opportunities just based on the gram number okay so first things first in order to create the gram stock screener on your excel or google sheet spreadsheet the first thing that you need to do is to get a list of stocks that you want to apply this screening criteria for that you can go online and look for a particular set of stocks so for example you could go ahead and type in industrial stock list in the nasdaq or whatever you want to search for and then you can just go ahead and copy paste that into your spreadsheet but something even better is to use the Y sheets built-in screener so in this case we're going to look for stocks that have a market cap greater than 5 billion in this case we're not gonna want to look for the price industrials is the type of stocks that we're going to be looking at but it could be anything along these uh, different sectors so that's fine the exchange we could also select select the exchange but we're not going to care about that and then we can also select actively trading which means stocks that are actually trading in the market you can also select any one of these filters that are available and enter a number but this should be good for now so we're going to click on get data and automatically on your spreadsheet the stock list will be generated for you so as you can see this contains many different stocks that meet this specific criteria so in that case it was the market cap that we're looking looking for so we can go ahead and sort by the lowest market cap companies and then the highest market cap companies we also said that we wanted companies in industrials and you can see that the sector is always industrials for this so now that we have the stock list the next step is to be able to get the data that we're looking to screen for which in this case is the gram number we're also going to get the stock price and then we're also going to get some other fundamental metrics first things first what we're going to do do is to get the stock price so the stock price is something that we already have in this column but the reason why we want to get it in another column in this case here is just personal preference but the main thing is that we want to have the price dynamic if we just keep the price like this this is the price that the stocks are trading at the time the Y sheet stock screener was used but if we want to keep it real time this is what we need to do so we're going to get rid of all the market caps here and now we're going going to enter the price so for that we're going to use the wise price function we're going to enter all the different tickers and then we're going to select price after we do that we click enter and right away as you can see you will be able to get the stock price for all these different companies and the best part about this is that using the white sheets add-on you can click on refresh live data and right away the data will automatically update for you now that we have that out of the way the next step is to add whatever metrics that we want to add to the screener so we're going to get rid of the beta and we're also going to get rid of the sector and industry because we know it's the same so in this case here we go now we have the price the dividend the volume exchange i'm going to get rid of the volume as well and then for the exchanges we're going to get rid of this information as well and now we're left with this so now that this is out of the way we're going to get rid of the filters so that way we start from scratch and now we're going to add the key number that we're looking for which is the gram number for other data that you can add to your screener you can console this page which is going to be a link in the description for white sheets and for each function it tells you what parameters or what data is available so looking at the key metrics we can get anything that we want right here so we're going to get the PE ratio and we're also going to get the enterprise value over the EBITDA with our table fully set up now we can go ahead and get this data so in this case the function to use is the white 
function we're going to select the symbol the parameters are going to be this ones right here we're going to lock this cells in so that way we could drag the function across and get it for all the different other companies and then the period is going to be ttm ttm is the trailing 12 months so this is going to give us the best number in order to compare this metrics for all these companies so for example ttm the p ratio would be based on the latest earnings of the company and the latest stock price so this is the real p ratio to compare as opposed to looking at historical numbers which is also possible with the function we can just change it to a specific year but this is better once we have this ready we can just simply double click here or drag it down select all the different companies and as you can see the data will automatically populate with all of the different values now you know what the gram number is and most importantly how it is that you can create a gram number stock screener right on your spreadsheet that's going to allow you to find better stock investment opportunities faster if you've enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification zone so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this that's going to allow you to take your investing game to the next level i'll see you in the next one